Hi, everyone. This is Rosemary Coates in Silicon Valley. I'm your host for today's edition of the Frictionless Supply Chain Podcast. I'm the executive director of the Reshoring Institute, where we help companies bring manufacturing back to the U.S. or expand their manufacturing here. And I'm also a contributing writer to Supply Chain Management Review. Today, I'm delighted to uh, welcome my guest and long-term friend, Lucy Hall. She's a professional and change uh, consultant and a project implementation expert. And I know from past experience in implementing software systems that change management is actually critical to the success of any project. So, and of course, um, the most significant business changes happen and projects happen uh, that involve a lot of change in the process that people go through and how teams work together. And so today we're going to be talking about the process of change. Oh, it's painful. It can be very painful for human beings. So let's get started. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Great to be here with you. Tell us how you got started in uh, organizational change management. It was something I actually fell into when I was working in big pharma back in the 90s. Uh, Big Pharma was undergoing a massive amount of change because there was a tremendous amount of automation in laboratories and reference labs and over 400 bed hospitals. And I was traveling extensively with our sales and services teams, working with the clients on what those changes would look like inside the lab and what, you know, actually automating all of the tests and the reagents and other clinical chemistry markers would look like. So that's how I fell into it. And then I was uh, blessed at the time to be living in Boston and went to the Harvard Business School's change management program. So it's been a long and fun journey since then. Okay. Wow. That's that's uh, a really interesting. I think most of us in our career can say we sort of fell into our positions, right? <laughs> <laughs> fell into the it's pathway that, uh, that we took. A lot of careers take all kinds of twists and turns and Things that are unexpected or you never heard of before. And yeah, so pretty interesting. So change is so hard for people, for human beings, Mm. um, whether we're trying to diet or change an exercise routine or start a new job or get married or, you know, all kinds of change happens in our life. Why is it so hard for human beings to change? Why is that so hard? I think it's, you know, there are multiple reasons. If you had to boil it down to just a few, it would be basically people are don't like the unknown. They don't like leaving a comfortable space in their current situation to transition to whatever the future state looks like. And so, you know, it really falls on the part of management to demystify what is that change going to look like on the front end that they're moving towards. And, you know, I think a lot of the challenges don't really even reside at an employee level. Many of them really reside at a management level, at a leadership Ah. level, and at a middle management level. So, um, you know, people are looking for, you know, how do I get there? What kind of information are you going to give me? How do I get fluent again? How are you going to be be preparing me to be successful? And so a successful change management program really addresses all of those things. Yeah, so it's really scary. I Years ago, I worked on a project in Korea, and we were changing a lot of processes. And so we went through change management exercises. And one of the things that I asked the the people to do, the team leaders to do, was um, to experience change for themselves. And I, I said, tomorrow morning, coming to work, do something different, go a different route, walk on the other side of the street, try using a different lane if you're driving, you know, all of that. Mm. And they were all saying, oh, okay, you know, we'll do that. Almost no one could do it. It's really (laughs) interesting. (laughs) They said, I can't walk on the other side of the street. That's not the way I go to work. And, you know, it was just, it was so interesting how much difficulty there was, even in the simplest tasks, task to try to change. It's just, it's sort of awesome um, in terms of our behavior, human behavior, and how much we like routine and the same things over and over again. Well, and I think that the key to the success of the program is to begin the change effort at the onset of the program. So in the beginning, if for some reason it doesn't happen, then you can join in 
and really start to put together a plan that addresses each phase of the transition so that employees and middle management and leadership are all wholly engaged. And then basically you're working towards a common set of goals. And it's important to understand, you know, what are the KPIs that have been established for this program? You know, what's in it for the employee? What's in it for the shareholder? What's in it for the customers? And basically what a change management consultant does is help tee all that up as part of a work stream within a program. It's not some you know, bolt on or something that gets plugged in on the side. It's really part and parcel of the entire program. So, so talk a little bit with us um, about what organizational change management is. I mean, what are the steps sure. that you go through and, and why is it, you know, why do you start at the beginning of a project to get change, in, you know, sort right. of embedded in the project? Sure. And basically, you know, a lot of times companies think, well, we don't really need change management. It's just a bunch of communication and training. And that's only really a small component of it. It's a, it's important but what change management is on the very front end is understanding, you know, what is the vision, what is the actual structure that we're hoping to move towards, okay? Whether it's you're putting in a new software system, whether you're merging two organizations together, whether you're divesting a company, what is that future state going to look like? And then the ability to translate what that future state is from an operational and a business process standpoint, that's going to be critical. And so on the front end, it's putting together the charter with the leadership team for the program and the program team them, themselves. And then understanding what's that transition going to look like? What's the forecasted disruption going to be? And then within that change uh, trajectory, there are several components. Obviously, there's a leadership component. The most critical part of any change process is that you have leadership alignment. And leadership alignment is one of the most challenging things any consultant can tell you that they'll ever work on because you're dealing with, as you know well know, you know all kinds of uh, personalities and egos and budgets and my head counts larger than yours and my spend is bigger than yours. And so it's very <laughs> important to really rally those troops and it's important to have that executive leader or sponsor. I hate using the word sponsor because it's, you, you automatically think of a word from our sponsor. It's so much more than a word from the sponsor. The sponsor has got to be like glue. You and I both have worked together and have had great customers who know how to play that role. And sometimes you get folks that don't know how to play that role. So a lot of times what I do behind the scenes is really help that person embrace what is the role of sponsor? It's the leader of the change, the person who keeps painting the vision and the picture for the change. So leadership alignment is critical. And basically that means that you've got sales and operations and engineering and HR and facilities and everybody who has a piece of the pie as it relates to that change. And they know they're going to get measured on how successful that change is. That's critical. That's number one. Number two is that basically we do a stakeholder analysis. So not just the top leadership team, obviously we interview them, but anybody in the organization who is seen as someone who's very influential, whether they're a top leadership person, a middle management person, whether they're an individual contributor or first line supervisor, it's very critical to tap into what I call the diagonal slice of the organization so that you understand what are these people's points of view about this change? What do they know about it? How has change been perceived in the past? What worked well? What didn't work well? The classic consulting questions. And then basically, once we know all of that, we know what we're in for in terms of what is the potential resistance to that change? And what are all the windfalls that we might realize as a result of that change? Because I will tell you, let's say people are resistant or they don't, they're afraid of the unknown. The moment you ask them to get involved, nine times out of 10, they're going to jump on board and they'll have a role to play. And that really includes setting up a change champion network, which is really critical. So, Some organizations so people, don't, people don't want change to, so people don't want change to happen to them, but they want to be part of the change, right? So getting Absolutely. them involved. And, and basically they can help their peers, their coworkers, their friends. They can help people what you know in terms of what do they need to know think and do as a result of this change if we're going to be putting in a reba or we're going to be putting in a new oracle system what is that going to mean okay to you well you're going to learn some new skills it's going to be exciting you're going to be part of training you may be even asked to give training so there are all kinds of techniques that you can use 
to work with that change agent or change champion network. So that's a critical part of the stakeholder management piece. Then of course you have to have a communication plan that runs through the life of the program. So from the project inception, all the way through, you know, design, build, the overall testing plan itself, because testing is a huge, you know, opportunity for stakeholders to get involved and understand how does this work, you know, or, you know, whatever your uh, simulation process is going to be if it's not full-blown testing. And then, you know, moving on to how do you prepare to actually go live or to cut over to get ready for the change, and then the post-production support. So the change management plan runs through the life cycle of that entire plan. There are specific activities and deliverables that are baked into each part of that program. And the communications. So, yeah, absolutely. communications. communications so when you're talking about, yeah, when you're talking about communications, you mean uh, not just sending out emails, but oh, no. talking to people, <laughs> having events. Yeah. Right. yeah. And that's that's where your change agent or change champion network becomes so invaluable. Because they can be management's right arm and get out there and help walk the talk and really answer questions for people. That's critical. So in addition to, we've talked about, you know, the vision, the leadership alignment, the stakeholder management, creating a communication plan, which has to use every medium available to you in the organization, not just the, you know, push email. That's really boring and dull. Plus, no one has time to read. You know, besides that, then basically you have to do what is known as an organizational change impact so that you understand what the business process changes are and what those impacts are on the workforce, the actual work that's done, how many people are needed to do the work and so forth. And yeah, that's, you know, that, that seems could, to me that that's the hardest part. That um, is, a, is and that's the most who, critical part. It yeah, really is. people who are working in a business and um, you know, they have to completely change the way they do work yes. every day. Um, you know, there's just in my experience, there's so much resistance to that. It's like, well, I never did it that way, or I've always done it this right. way, or this is the way I think about it. And and to have people change their mindset as well as their activities, just incredibly hard. Just like when I was in Korea and people couldn't walk on the other side of the street. I mean, sure. just we sure. get we get used to and comfortable with the way we do things. And, uh, you know, if you're putting in a system or any kind of big change, a lean system or that sort of thing, you have to do things differently. And I, I think it all goes back to how you kick off the program, because you have to have representation from each of the departments that are being impacted. You've got to have people on the team. They can't just be brought in at the last minute to maybe do a little testing on the side or pr provide a little, you know, you know, let's kick it under the table kind of thing. It's really they have to join from the beginning so they can talk about what the nuances are involved in how they perform their work and how work flows through the system and how work flows across departments. It's really critical to have their engagement and their involvement from the beginning. And they can also tell the organ they can tell the consulting team and whoever's leading the program, you know, what are our pain points and how do we address those with this change? Because that's got to be part of the key performance indicators is that we're making something better, faster, cheaper, we're improving cycle time. This is not just because Gee, SAP, we're an SAP shop. We have to have all SAP modules. Well, we've got to make sure that there's a win-win in there. Okay, several wins for the people who are doing the work, the managers who are managing the work, and then obviously the reporting. Yeah, because I mean, don't don't critical. people don't people often think, well, management is shoving this down my throat. I don't <laughs> want to change. I use my spreadsheets. Why should I have to put this on a system? I mean, there's all kinds of resistance yep. like ordinary resistance like that that is so mm -hmm. hard for people to accept and embrace right and so is there a difference i guess um between employees that have been around for 25 years and maybe new college graduates i mean is are some <laughs> groups more acceptable of change or and, you know and what, some I, are just can't? i think there's a lot of um i think there's a lot of conclusions that can be drawn about people with a long length of service. I, I typically enjoy the heck out of those people because they may be the ones who tell you on the front end, Lucy, I've seen this come and I've seen that go and this too shall pass, right. you know. We've and done you know this what, 20 happened? times, so, it never right. works. Right, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. And basically what I look for is if you have done it 20 times, then I really want you involved on our team. I wanna know 
what worked well, what didn't work well. And I'm going to give you a job. Okay. You're going to have a job in this program. You are going to have a key role. And so, you know, I love those folks because at, at the end of the day, they want to bring their knowledge. They want information for management. They want leadership to listen to them, but they also want to make a point of view that, and that's critical, you know, new, new people, fresh outs from college, they're delightful. You know, I mean, they'll be running along, you know, gee, how, how fast can we run? Point me in the direction today. And, you know, that's fantastic. So my attitude is bring it all on. You know, we want a diversity of people working on the program, different points of view, different, you know, lengths of service. We want people to be involved. And then, you know, what I typically do is, is many times I'll have a team. I'll have like a couple people working for me that do the training development, which that's my next phase. We move from the organizational change impact, which gathers really what the changes are. And we begin to inform the plan to do the training. And so the training is really critical because employees don't want to feel uncomfortable. That's one of their biggest issues is how am I going to learn this? How am I going to learn the new processes? How am I going to learn the new approvals? How am I going to learn the new workflow? Tell me what you're going to do. And again, if they get involved throughout the life of the program, they can be on the training team that, you know, in terms of the development of the material, they can review all the material. They can sometimes be tapped on the shoulder to do train the trainer, which candidly is usually the best way to deliver training because they know the business so well. And so, you know, getting them involved, keeping them involved, keeping them together, and obviously recognizing everybody's contribution is critical. And so, you know, the last part of the whole thing is how do you get ready to go live, you know, or how do you get ready for the transition? You know, uh, recently, uh, in the last couple of years, I, I worked on a huge merger for a global company and they bought you know, two different uh, companies that had locations around the world. We had about 50 some odd sites around the world. And that's always challenging because we had, you know, people in every different time zone and every different location, whether it was Shanghai or, you know, Wiesbaden or they were in Australia, you name it, they were everywhere. So we had to have a lot of boots on the ground. Okay. We had to have the IT reps. We had to have the management reps. And we had to have the employees who were subject matter experts in every process area. And they were part of our team. We did a lot of work virtually, okay? Because obviously we're not going to pay for everybody to fly over to Australia three times a month. Uh, so That's too bad. <laughs> as much as I like it over there. But honestly, it can work on any scale. My point is simply, you know, it, you, it can work on any scale. The, the, what I'm describing is a, a toolkit. It's very transferable to any project and any scale of a project. And, um, you know, basically when you get ready to, to cut over or flip the switch or, you know, welcome in your, your new organizations that are now part of your company, you have to have a plan that leads up to that day one. And that day one activities are crucial in terms of making sure people know what's going on and making sure they know how to help, making sure they know. What am I going to be saying on day one now that I'm not part of X, Y, and Z company anymore? I'm part of your company now. What am I going to be doing? And so there's a huge buildup to any kind of a cutover or transition. And that's going to be managed extremely carefully, adroitly. And, you know, you have to have some mocks of that as well, even if it's not a system cutover. In some cases, so, systems cutting over as well. So if you're implementing a big ERP system, say Oracle or SAP sure. or NetSuite or something sure. like that, the consultants that are doing the implementation are busy doing the technical part, the configuration and uh, right. the setups and that sort of thing. So organizational change management works with program management as sort of an umbrella uh, of yes. activities to weave in and out the change piece. Um, so it's really right. um, critical to begin at the beginning Absolutely. and and to see it through all the way to the end. So you Absolutely. said it, it includes getting stakeholders on board or people on board yes. at multiple levels all the way through the organization. Um, you address uh, the differences in their processes and their work. You do training uh, and give feedback. What do you do when you've got an employee that's just stuck? And um, either can't can't 
complete the training or, you know, can't do it sufficiently or yeah. just doesn't want to, or says, you know, I've been using my spreadsheets for 20 yeah. years and they're right. working fine. And now you're asking me to do less and put it on, uh, you know, put it on some system somewhere and I can't manipulate it like I used to. And, you know, what do you do sure. with someone like that? Sure. I, it's really important, first of all, to understand directly from them what their concerns are. You know, listen to them, listen to what their concerns are and work with them and work with their manager or their team lead to put a plan together to help them transition. You know, and a lot of the, the good news is, is that you usually know about all those people back during the stakeholder analysis. So it's not typically during training or, you know, when we're doing testing or any of that stuff, it doesn't typically emerge there. It emerges much earlier. And because you know it's going to emerge much earlier, you already have a plan in place to deal with that individual, to help that individual see what's in it for them. You know, it's very rare that people say, oh, I'm going to leave the company now. You know, it's it's you listen to them, you find out what their issues are and you help address what those issues are. From a consulting standpoint, you always let the manager do that or their team lead. And then you provide the support and the extra coaching that they need. And then they can rejoin the project or maybe they don't want to be on the project in the beginning. Okay, that's fine. Then who would they recommend join the project in their place? And that I find is always an interesting discussion because once they start to think about it, nine times out of 10, they're going to go, I really want to be on the project. I changed my mind. But okay. sometimes they don't. But, you know, again, it, it's interesting. I, I may sound, you know, extremely optimistic, but I don't. I really have never had too many issues with too many folks at all. It's it's really, you know, we need to be involved. We want to know what's going on. It's, you know, if I had an extra 12 hours in the day, I'd be thrilled. Um, I think meeting people on their level, talking to people on their turf, in their space, going to their cube, going to their office, it's absolutely critical. Obviously, we're living in a virtual world or a hybrid world, whatever world we're in anymore. And so, you know, the, the first thing I do when I join a program is I, I meet people one on one. You know, I find out who they all are. I get all the org charts and I go meet them. These are the people that are going to be the movers and the shakers in the program. I want to know who they are. And I interview them and I find out what their experience is with programs like this or what they would like to see as a result of this project. Because it's really important to meet people's expectations and also to clarify what the program isn't, okay? It's not gonna do this. It won't solve you know, world hunger, et cetera, or bring world peace, but it will do these things. And that's why it's so critical on the front end to know what your KPIs are forecasted to be, what the forecasted disruption is gonna be. And that's, you know, comes out of having the dialogue with leadership of the project team. Uh, that's that's terrific. Can you do you um, think that any big project can be successful without change management? It's very rare that it can be. I've um, yeah, you and I both know the who the worst projects are in the in the universe that you and I both reside in. I mean, it's all public information. All you have to do is look it up. You know, do some Google searches, and nine times out of ten, the issues with these programs are people, totally people related. They're not yep. at all anything to do with the software. They're not the vendor. They're not the business process. You know, it has to do with people. And so um, basically where these things blow up is lack of leadership. Leadership is absolutely critical because you need to have a, a sponsored group that basically tells everyone, this is the direction we're going in and we need your help. And here's how you can get on board and how you get on, involved. And that is absolutely crucial. Um, you and I, I know, have both played roles where we've had to prop up people who that was not their absolute strength, okay? And that's okay because, you know, as consultants, we're either the guide by the side or we're the sage on the stage. And if you're a professional, you know which Say role Say that again, the guy on the side? The guide on the side or the sage okay. on the stage. And okay. so we, we all know what role we need to play. OK, once we meet those clients and where they need us to be. And I think just to wrap up, uh, what's really critical is, you know, once you've gone live or, you know, implemented your transition or, you know, now you're you're bringing in these other companies or divisions into your new company, you have to do a lessons learned. 
you really have to wait about 30, 60 days and do a lessons learned and do those lessons learned again with that cross section of the organization. Obviously, talk to the project team themselves and then talk to all the various constituents that have been part of the program so that you know what worked well, what didn't work well, what could we have improved? Okay. And moreover, what was our objective? Do you remember what it was and have we achieved it in your mind? And I, I think, you know, from a parting words of wisdom standpoint, one of the biggest challenges, and you know this as well, is, is working with leadership who thinks, okay, we're at the jump off point. We're going to go live, you know, catch up. Why is it, why haven't we hit those KPIs yet? There is a time to become fluent in the new process, okay? Usually it's within 90 days. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but you cannot expect, you know, gee, I cut cycle time down. Gee, I improved my ROI. Gee, I improved my, you know, asset visibility, blah, blah, blah. Immediately, it's not going to happen. And I think what happens is there's often a disconnect from top leadership to the people who are on the team because people who are on the team never want to tell top leadership, no, we're not going to hit those KPIs on day one. Or you I know? don't want to do it, this, it or it's not time. working. Yeah, right. Right. right, right, right. And the employees know, the people who do all the work know that, right? Yes. And so, right. you know, the, the challenge is managing that delicate, you know, tension and balance between the two groups. Yeah, well, just, it's so important. I know from experience that unless you have an effective change management uh, approach, uh, a leader, um, you know, a plan, all, all these things are just, crucial to the success of a project. Um, so how do, you know, when do you say this is a project that we need to have change management involved? I mean, not all projects are just systems implementation. Sure. You could have, like you said, a merger or acquisition or something. Right. Why, you know, what's the trigger that says now I need to look for a change management person either within the company or a consultant? Sure. And, and it's really, you know, like space planning projects or we're going to move into a new building. Any kind of project where, you're, where you are going to impact. Holy cow, people. man. I've been uh, on a couple of those, those where <laughs> the people were crazy because they, you know, they didn't get the cubicle oh, they wanted right. or they used right. to have an office and now they've got a cubicle. And oh, man, that's a right. really tough change to go through. Right. Or yeah. I have to drive nine miles further than I yes. used to. Right. And so. Right. I, I mean, any pro rule of thumb is any project that impacts people, you need some kind of a change management plan. You know, you absolutely have to have some kind of plan. If it's not a lot of impact, sometimes you can get away with just communications and training. Okay. But you really do need to, the work I described is really the same regardless of the size of the project and the number of constituents. I mean, if there's only 10 people impacted, then obviously it's more change management light, okay? It's a smaller type of a project, but you still have to understand what the issues are, what the volume of the change is, what the depth of the change. Yeah. You know, what are the big issues that are going to come out? And so you still have to have a plan for that. Um, sometimes I work with clients and I work on multiple projects at the same time. Um, other times I work on just one big, huge project for a period of time. Um, you know, because there's just so much going on and, you know, we're in 24 sites and we've got, you know, multiple modules being implemented and so on. But, you know, it's, it's people who think they can do it all themselves, you know, more power to you. It's just try to listen to a professional, try to read yeah. something. It's, you know. it's not easy for sure. It's I think in not. fact <laughs> that change management is the hardest part of any project. Um, you know, there's technical people that can, can uh, configure the system and implement, you know, the databases and that sort of thing. But change management requires somebody special. And I'm, I'm so glad we were able to talk to you today because I know thank you're you. a leader in that area. Thank you. Uh, thank so you. thank you so much for joining us today, Lucy. And I hope the audience got a lot out of this and understands that change management is critical on any big project that you're undertaking can you give us your contact information in case anybody wants to get sure. in contact with you? Sure. I am pretty active on LinkedIn. So feel free to look me up on LinkedIn. It's Lucy, L-U-C-Y Hall, H-A-L-L. -L. And uh, just message me through there and we'll start communicating. And I can also at that time share my, my mobile phone with you and my email. So 
feel free to contact me through LinkedIn. Terrific. Thank you. And you can listen to more frictionless supply chain podcasts posted on Supply Chain Management Reviews landing page, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can reach me, Rosemary Coates, at rcoates, R-C-O-A-T-E-S, at reshoringinstitute.org. And visit our website, www.reshoringinstitute.org, where we publish all of our research and on manufacturing in America. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you.